in the last video i told you about plant breeding for developing uh, disease resistant plants now in this session i'm going to talk about uh, plant breeding for developing uh, resistance to insect pests now uh, these insects uh, actually cause a lot damage uh, to the crop so uh, that results actually in large scale destruction of the crop and there will be huge losses to the farmer now uh, already we are using uh, from long back uh, some chemicals which we call them pesticides okay now there is uh, there are some problems actually using these uh, pesticides uh, one problem is that in course of time uh, all those insects on which we are actually applying pesticides they are developing resistant to those pesticides so uh, hence the normal quantity which they use to kill the pests will be not enough so they have to increase the concentration and so on and so to kill and again uh, using the pesticides is actually causing environmental pollution so i'll come to uh, how these uh, pesticides are actually causing environmental pollution and all we will see okay uh, in the coming uh, sessions now so these are the two major problems using the pesticide so for this reason we need to develop the plants that are capable of themselves to resist the pests okay so now uh, uh, we'll see that point that in some plants okay so in some plants they developed resistance to insect pests which are actually present naturally so naturally uh, many plants have developed okay in course of time to insect pests and that's what so insect resistance in the host crop plants that are uh, actually present naturally so they are maybe some morphological characters uh, that help in keeping away the insects and maybe some biological characters and maybe some uh, physiological characters so we'll see some examples of this uh, to understand so what are those naturally uh, present characters that help in keeping away the insects so here i give you some examples of naturally present characters that actually help in keeping away uh, those insects so the first point is that uh, several plants they naturally have uh, hairy leaves so there will be okay hair uh, present on the leaf so, so like this the hair will be present on the leaf when you see it from the side okay right the hair on leaf okay so now uh, these uh, hairs on the leaf uh, because of that the insect may not be able to stand okay properly on this uh, leaf so that actually helps in giving resistance to insects okay uh, in this case I'll give you examples uh, okay so uh, the resistance to jassics in cotton so uh, cotton varieties they have okay hair on the leaf and these jassics are okay insects a uh, very tiny insects okay I just mention here jassics are tiny insects that feed on plant sap okay I'll mention it here the so jacets are tiny insects that feed on plant sap and as they are tiny insects they will not be able to get to the surface of the leaf due to presence of this hair on the leaf okay so that is resistance to jacets in cotton plant and the similar case is uh, with the the several leaf beetle in case of wheat so this is one feature that naturally keeps away some insects now the second feature is presence of solid stems like in case of wheat 
So if the stems are solid, then the, that will not attract something called a stem saw fly. So this uh, stem saw fly usually prefers a hollow stems. Now, if it is having solid stems, it will not be attracted by this uh, stem saw fly. In another case, uh, there are uh, presence of smooth leaves and also nectarless uh, flowers in fact. So in the cotton varieties. So if the leaves are smooth and uh, very nectarless, then actually it will not attract ball worms. So they are also insects, right? And another character like presence of high aspartic acid, uh, then okay, presence of low nitrogen, then uh, even low sugar content, okay. Low sugar content in maize will actually help uh, giving resistance to uh, maize stem borers. So these are uh, some characters that are present in the plants and will help in uh, resisting insects. Now when coming to the breeding methods, uh, for developing pest resistant plants so the breeding process will involve the same steps that which I have discussed uh, earlier like uh, okay uh, collection of uh, germ plasm and whatever those steps we have seen uh, in the normal plant breeding the same steps will be uh, also used here for developing pest resistant plants now uh, let's see those uh, sources of uh, resistance genes so uh, you will get these uh, resistant genes, uh, maybe you can collect it from the cultivated uh, varieties or you may also go for germplasm collections of the crops or even uh, the wild varieties. Now here I give you some okay, uh, crop varieties that are, are resistant to insect pests and these have been developed by the hybridization and uh, the selection procedures right so here uh, this is a variety and uh, the crop so in this uh, brassica that's uh, commonly called rape seed mustard right we developed a variety and uh, we gave a name to it uh, it's called pusa gaurau now this variety called pusa gaurau is resistant to aphids so here aphids are also uh, tiny insects and they feed on plant sap okay so they uh, right uh, uh, draw this plant sap and because of that the plant uh, will not grow properly and uh, uh, right it may die right and there will be a lot of loss so that's uh, even the same case with the jassies okay so the aphids and jacids, uh, right, are uh, insects here. Almost all of them, whatever we are discussing, uh, they all belong to the arthropoda group. Okay, right. Now, uh, that's the pusa gaura, uh, which is resistant to aphids. Then, uh, coming to the flat bean. So in the case of the flat bean, we developed uh, two varieties, uh, pusa sem2 and pusa sem3, and both of them are are resistant to jacids, resistant to aphids and also resistant to uh, fruit borders. Then coming in case of okra uh, which we call the bindi that is apple moscus esculentus which we have already seen earlier. Now we developed two varieties one it is called pusa savani and another one called pusa a4 and these two varieties are resistant to shoot borders as well as uh, fruit border so they uh, put holes and damage the stem and also the fruits so that is all about uh, the plants that what we have developed uh, to uh, resist insect pests uh, next we shall see about this uh, plant breeding for improved food quality so we are even using the plant breeding techniques to improve the quality of the food. So here, uh, before we go into it, let's see. So more than 840 million uh, people in the world, so they are not able to get uh, adequate food. 
to make their uh, daily uh, food and the nutritional uh, requirements so uh, daily requirements so there will be in the number of calories or the nutrients or the vitamins so there will be a daily requirement and uh, more than these 840 million people uh, in the world they are not able to get this daily requirement here and again more than 3 billion people they are actually suffering from the micronutrient uh, deficiency uh, protein deficiency and also uh, vitamin deficiencies so here uh, why this problem of micronutrient protein and uh, uh, vitamin deficiencies is because they are not able to buy uh, enough fruits or vegetables legumes uh, fish and meat so when they don't eat this definitely there will be micronutrient protein and vitamin deficiencies problem and that's what we call actually uh, that comes under hidden hunger now uh, the diets lacking so the food what we eat if they do not have this essential micronutrients so if they're not having this essential micronutrients uh, particularly the micronutrients like iron vitamin a iodine and zinc this will obviously reduces the lifespan and also the mental abilities now we are actually developing the crops with the higher levels of vitamins and the higher levels of minerals or even higher protein content and also healthier fats okay so breeding or developing the crops with the higher levels of these vitamins minerals uh, uh, proteins and healthier fats is what we call biofortification right and uh, what are those objectives of breeding for improved nutritional quality so uh, the, when you look at the objectives here we like to increase the protein content and quality in those uh, vegetables okay in the fruits or in the vegetables and so and also increase oil content and quality and increase uh, the vitamin content okay and also increase the micronutrient and the mineral content in those okay uh, <coughs> the food sources uh, that are available to us so in the year 2000 uh, we developed the maize hybrids so these maize hybrids they have twice the amount of amino acids so those amino acids like lysines and tryptophan are amino acids and they are twice the number okay when compared with the other normal hybrid varieties now again a big variety named atlas 66 and uh, this has a very high protein content and uh, for that purpose we are using this variety uh, as a donor for improving the other cultivated wheat and again uh, it became possible even to develop uh, rice with enriched with the uh, iron that's what we call iron fortified rice and this iron fortified rice may have uh, five times more iron than uh, compared with the normal varieties the IARI that is Indian Agricultural Research Institute located in uh, New Delhi uh, this IARI so the people at IARI they also developed and released uh, several uh, vegetables that are actually enriched with the uh, the minerals and vitamin so here i have given you some examples like uh, the vitamin a enriched they developed uh, carrots and spinach and uh, pumpkins and they have been already in the market now even with uh, uh, the vegetables that are enriched with vitamin c like bitter gut batwa is a leafy vegetable okay mustard and tomato so these are all okay enriched with the vitamin c and they are also been released into the market now coming to iron and calcium enriched so coming to this iron and calcium enriched the spinach and batwa they developed uh, okay uh, this uh, with the iron and calcium uh, in more quantity and they are also in the market and now with the protein enriched so when coming to protein enriched uh, here we see 
uh, we have broad beans then we have lab 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 they are also beans then french peas and garden peas uh, who are all enriched with the, uh, the protein so these are uh, some examples okay uh, that are vegetables enriched with the minerals and vitamins so that's what we call the biofortified uh, vegetables here